Well, I have no idea if this is going to work or not, but we're going to try. Welcome to another video. I know it's been a few weeks since I posted one. And really the reason why is because I don't really want to make videos that are just rehashes of what everyone else has already done or doing. And it's really hard to come up with some new ideas. So what I decided to try and do today, it's overcast right now. And so the light is diffused, which for photography is normally pretty good to have diffused light. However, when you're shooting infrared, it's I find it's better to have a, a, a bright blue sky. On top of that, I've decided to try and do macro on diffused light. And it may or may not work, but we're going to give it a shot. The idea is, if I find something worth photographing, then I'm going to go and show you how I processed it in Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop. So, let's get going. My goal today is to find things like this that I can shoot in macro and convert to black and white. A high contrast black and white. Maybe something like this. But do it in macro. Or maybe a backlit leaves like this. I'm going to put up an example of one I did that is not infrared or macro. And I convert them to black and white. And what I want to do is see if I can do it in infrared and how it compares between just straight regular camera black and white versus doing it in infrared and see what differences there are. So that's my goal. Like I said, here's here's one that I did straight black and white with a um, a, a, a Zeiss macro lens last year maybe two years ago and now i'm using the nikon z 105 macro lens so i want to see it with an infrared camera so i want to see what differences i can get all right we'll get back well i'm back we'll have to see what we can get i'm not convinced that macro photography and infrared are a good mix and so you could say, well, I wasted my time. No, I didn't waste my time because I learned something. And I'll go back to the computer and see if possibly there's an image I can work with and, and show you how I process it. And we'll go from there. But in one of my previous videos, I talk about how you need to get out and experiment and do different things with your camera. And this was something I chose to do. Um, you know, macro when you're shooting leaves is kind of hard outside. You get a little bit of a breeze and poof, you're out of out of focus pretty quick. So, wasn't the easiest thing to do, but it was a learning lesson. So let's see what we can get. Okay, I'm back at my computer, and as you can see, here are the ones that I took this morning. Not too many. The one that uh, I, I tried to shoot in macro was that there. And I'm going to put it up in a minute. You're going to see the hot spot. So that didn't work. This one I worked on. This is the same image, just taking a couple of seconds later. Uh, what I was really trying to do was to find leaves on the on a bark with vines and things like that. I couldn't really find one in proper light. So just because of the experiment that I wanted to do, we're going to use this image. Now, the first thing that you should do 
is change your profile to match your camera or if you're using a filter and the reason why it, it fixes your your blues and this is a profile I created if you need to learn how to create your profile for your own camera let me know and I'll show you a link on where to go and get that so anyway, once you change your profile now you can see here the slider you can use your blues a lot more where before it was tacked up against the side and you really couldn't use it a whole lot so even then you might want to try and change your white balance I don't really have anything in here that's particularly white so it's tough to change your balance too much first thing I want to do is up my contrast a little bit lower my highlights for now maybe lower the shadows the whites we're going to adjust later darken those blacks since ultimately what we want to do is get into black and white increase your textures a little bit your clarity and then another way to pump your black sometimes is to dehaze it again I couldn't really find one that was backlit which is what I really wanted and because the wind was blowing quite a bit a little bit of a breeze you know this down here isn't really tack sharp nor is it up here which is not ideal I mean this isn't really going to be a, a portfolio shot but it's more just to show you how I do these in post-processing so that's about all I do in Adobe Camera Raw and the first thing we do once we're in Photoshop is to convert it to black and white and also uh, with infrared a lot of times I change the uh, channel mixer in black and white I don't know if that's always necessary but I'm going to do it just to show you so you go into your red channel and you make that roughly zero and then bump your blue to 100 roughly so you're just swapping your red and your blue channels for landscapes I find it works a little bit more I think than what it's gonna produce here but anyway okay we've done that now we go back to our black and white and then you just start seeing the effect you want with your black and white okay it's still not really where I'd like it so then the next thing you do is check your levels now you can see you know where near your white point and that's why I wasn't too concerned about the white balance before this is where you can really fine-tune where you want that so if you want to eliminate like watch how you can eliminate all the white spots in the background see that that's how you can do that in your levels don't know that you want to clip your blacks too much but that's how I really get more of a contrasty black and white something that I like to do that I'm, I don't see too many people do um, unless they're doing straight platinum but I don't see too many people do this this is just one of my preferences 
can't say it's a secret since I'm showing you how to do it. But the last thing I do is I put a gradient map on it. And I use their platinum map, which you have to go and find in one of the filter sections. I, I pulled it out so I could always get at it pretty easy. But I like to put a little bit of platinum on it. You can see the difference there. See that? Almost takes a little bit of the shine off of it. Almost almost like a polarizer would do. And then, I don't know that you want to do this or not, but you can always go back into here, into your channel mixer. That's the beauty of infrared, is that you can play with this a little bit more. That's just kind of a quick down and dirty way. Then you uh, flatten it. That's about it. You can sharpen it up a little bit more if you want. You never want to over sharpen them. Again, I'm not real thrilled with the fact that these edges aren't sharp but it was more just to kind of show you the difference between this and one done with a straight camera doing black and white. So I'm going to put a couple on the screen right now. The first one is going to be black and white. And it, and it was done with the same way with the levels and the dehaze and putting a platinum gradient on it. Very similar processing, but it wasn't infrared and then this one is infrared obviously it's not the same leaf the other one I took was a couple of years ago same park this was shot in December and that one was shot in June so it's not even the same time of year but it's the same type of leaf and you can just see a little bit of a of a difference um I think that infrared has its place. I don't know. I, it, me, I probably, if I was just going out and doing these leaves like this, I'd probably just take my 50 millimeter lens because I'm going to pop up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up the picture with the hotspot on it with that uh, 105 Nikon Z macro lens with the infrared at, I want to say it was F3.5 or F4, it had the hot spot. Once you get out to F8, it's not as pronounced, not quite as bad, but you find that with a lot of lenses. The only one that I don't find it with quite as much is with the Nikon 50mm 1.8. That thing really doesn't have a lot of hot spots. Once you get above maybe F4, it's pretty good. F5.6, you're pretty good. Certainly by F8, there's no hot spots. Same with the 20 millimeter. At uh, f1.8, f2 in there, you're going to have some hot spots. But most of the time with a 20 millimeter, you're shooting at f8 anyway, f11, and you don't have the hot spots. So uh, again, I don't know if I'm going to try to do more macro with infrared. Might be interesting. Um, I think it has its place. I'm not convinced. It's a good use with macro, but I'm not convinced yet that it's not. So if you have any opinions on it or if you've done macro and infrared, let me know. Let me see some of your images. Point me to some of them and we can have a discussion. But that's about it. That was my little experiment. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care until next time. If you learned anything or can help me out, just hit like and subscribe and, and we'll go from there. So until next time, take good care.